a long time ago, all the way back to March 11th, 2020. Yo. What's up, lover researchers? It's Kevin. Did you like that intro? Yeah? Smash the like button if you liked it. Thank you to Kessellabs.io for that intro. <laughs> anyway, hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today I want to share a quick case study from my everyday work. One where I went from having a, a planned in-person study and switching it over to a remote study at the very last minute uh, because of coronavirus. Now I know a lot of us researchers have been switching over to remote research, so if you have any such stories that you'd like to share, let me know, comment down below, or shoot me an email, kevin at 0 uxcom Without further ado, let's get to it. So our story begins a long time ago. All the way back to March 11th, 2020. I had eight in-person interviews scheduled for the very next day, March 12th. I had my study plan and discussion guide all buttoned up, prototypes working smooth, participants all scheduled, stakeholders eager and excited to watch the sessions. Everything was going fine and dandy, but for the rest of the world, things were anything but. I received an email from our HR department that read something like this. This week, the COVID-19 outbreak has come much closer to home for many of us in the US, setting off more restrictive measures to keep people safe. San Francisco staff are encouraged to work from home for the next few weeks until further notice. No external visitors in the office. This is business critical, so no exceptions. Relief was my first reaction. I hate being stuffed up on a train anyway every morning, but soon thereafter, a quick realization. How will I run this study now? I had scheduled moderated in-person interviews because we were showing participants confidential concepts and prototypes, and we wanted them to interact with the prototypes. But if we're not allowed to have people come into the lab anymore, and the show must go on, what is a researcher to do? Well, since we had participants scheduled already, it didn't make sense to cancel them or find new ones. The only change was going to be changing it to remote. So with less than 24 hours to make this happen, first thing I did was I went to the participant recruiter. I asked her to coordinate with the participants, asked them if it was okay to switch everyone to remote studies over Zoom. And luckily everyone agreed. Everyone wanted to be home during these unsafe times anyway. So the second thing I did, what more like at the same time, I let our stakeholders know that we are not allowed to have people come into our office anymore. So we're gonna have to switch this to a remote study. And they all understood why, and they're on board with it. What I did next was set up invitation links on Zoom. Um, I sent them to all my stakeholders and the same link to the participants so that everyone could join the same one during the scheduled time. You know, I asked if the participants are able to use their own devices, their own uh, desktop and webcam for this study, and they all were able to do that. And finally, I asked them to sign the non-disclosure and consent forms before our sessions. Now, why did I choose Zoom? Uh, well, if you don't have access to fancy or expensive user testing tools, uh, Zoom is a great alternative for hacky research. You can record the whole session um, and also have stakeholders observe. But my absolute favorite feature of Zoom has to be the remote control feature. The remote control feature basically allows you to let your participants take control of your screen. What this means is I did not have to host my prototype on any kind of external website. Uh, I could just pull it up on my own laptop, share my screen, and have them interact with it as if it was on their own screen. So if you don't want to share a link to your prototype, this can really simplify your research for both you and your participant. But if you're afraid that some rogue participant might, you know, try and open you up your bank account, or worse, You can abort control with just one click. Another reason I chose Zoom is that participants didn't have to download anything. All they had to do was click on the meeting, join it. We go through the motions, you know, I introduce them to the study. You're like, hey, I'm Kevin, I'm not testing you. We're testing the designs. There's no right or wrong answers, blah, blah, blah. Um, share my screen, have them take control, and then interact with the prototype as they talk loud. And anytime you don't have to have participants download anything to do your study, that's happy times. All the while, stakeholders are able to observe. <laughs> Smooth. Hey, so are there any other tips for remote research? Yeah. Uh, well, if, again, watch my video on remote user research testing tools, free remote user research testing tools, uh, up here 
uh, in the description below. Any quick search online will give you a whole bunch of different options for testing tools like user testing, usability hub, use zoom, um, dscout for diary studies. Sometimes I will recruit 12 participants in literally 30 minutes using Validately. It's awesome. <laughs> but what if you don't have any tools? Or you're broke AF. Well, if you're conducting mobile studies and you need to see people's taps and gestures, uh, ask them to give their laptops a big old hug. What do I mean by this? Uh, I mean literally get them to turn their webcams on, turn their laptops around, point it down, uh, and hug it like this. Now you can watch them use their phones um, and tap, you know, obviously put it on their table so they're not actually holding it. So like this, put it on the table, ask them to use your apps and whatnot, and voila, super cheap and effective. So in summary, this was a case study I wanted to share uh, as an example of my everyday work, but also to give you an example of how UX researchers might have to deal with different problems like not being able to invite people into the lab. So we had to switch things last minute. And this was a case where I could replace my study with a remote version. But what if you were doing ethnography, contextual inquiry, live intercepts? Well, as far as I can tell, I mean, you can always ask your participants if they're okay with meeting in person still, or if you're safe. Uh, but in any case, I think those research methods probably will be put on hold for the time being. This is a time where we're faced with different kinds of constraints and limitations. But I don't see that as hindrance to research. This is actually an opportunity for us to exercise our creativity in research and problem solving. Use methods we haven't used in a while or just to try something new. Sure, we may not be able to get those visceral senses of doing in-person studies, but you know, it's paramount to keep ourselves, our participants, our families, our coworkers, everyone around you safe. So stay safe and happy researching. And if you find yourself staying home with nothing to do, why not spend an extra time taking classes from the Interaction Design Foundation? Uplevel your UX knowledge by taking courses from the Interaction Design Foundation on UX, gamification, product management, research, leadership, and more. If you use my link in the description below, you get 25% off any courses or three months of free membership. And you can earn a verifiable certificate for finishing those courses so you can show off on your badass resume. Thanks again for watching. Just wanted to share a quick case study. If you have any stories from your research work or how this event has impacted your life uh, leave a comment down below i hope you're staying safe if you found this helpful smash the like button and subscribe i make all things ux research related to help you become the most badass ux leader mad love peace